you know Kevin MacLeod. Whether or not you recognize the name, chances are you'll recognize his music. Maybe you even felt a sense of recognition or even annoyance when you noticed the infamous Scheming Weasel playing in the background of this. You might recognize it from old simple videos on YouTube between 2012 and 2016, or even from some you watched today, but you probably didn't know the name. If you were curious, you could choose to follow the obligatory link in the description or the credits of those videos, which would take you to a site called Incompetech, where you may be surprised to find other earworms, like Monkey Spinning Monkeys. Fluffing a duck. When browsing in Compotech, you may be surprised to learn that all these songs, as well as thousands of others, are made by one artist, Kevin, who gives them all away for free, even for commercial use. For nine years, he has had no other career and still manages to put food on the table. This begs the question how has he been doing this for so long? But more importantly, why? To answer this question, we need to talk about how this model works in a financial sense, as well as how it works for both producers and consumers. Let's start with how it works. Kevin seems to credit the success of his model mostly to the publicity it grants him. In the pilot video for an unfinished documentary on him, he states that his music has been used in thousands of movies on IMDb and roughly 2.7 million videos on YouTube. He's also seen his music used in more surprising ways, like as on-hold music in a political statement, and even as music for a theme park. To benefit from this, Kevin distributes every song with a license that requires creators who use his music to credit him somewhere in their piece. That's why you see a link to his website at the ends of all those videos. Of course, you can't just make money on being popular, which is why the download button on Compotech will send users to this prompt, which presents them with the option of what's called an extended license. Purchasing this license for 20 euros, about 22 US dollars, not only supports Kevin, but also provides several benefits, the most notable of which is the right to use the song without attribution. While smaller creators won't purchase this license, the option of a free or extended license ensures that each use of Kevin's songs either serves as a profit or an advertisement. Also, some mediums have no means of crediting Kevin, so they have to purchase an extended license. So any on-hold music in that theme park both pay Kevin 20 euros per song. His songs are used illegally, of course, but the Incompetech FAQ states that an AI will track down these uses, which end up making Kevin more money than they would if they had just purchased the license. Okay, so the model works. But that only answers the how part of the question. Obviously, giving people a free option will be less profitable than traditional music distribution. So why would Kevin be okay with making less money than he otherwise could? Well, Kevin has made it abundantly clear that money is not his main priority. Because he makes less money in each song, there's less risk involved overall, and he can make as many as he likes without fear that a single bad one will damage him financially. This has led to him making over 2,000 songs in the nine years that he's been in the business. This also means that, unlike most musicians, he doesn't need a target audience, which enables him to innovate and experiment in whatever genres he chooses. In fact, he's made songs in over 30 genres, ranging from classical to ska, Latin, and even dubstep. Without the distraction of money, Kevin is able to create exactly what he wants. As Kylie Swenson puts it, how can your art be truly creative, innovative, and soulful when you're constantly shaking the money tree? Arguably the biggest flaw with the current system is that artists need to hire expensive staff like agents, social media teams, stylists, and managers. Not only do these things lead to creators' profit, but they also take away a large portion of their autonomy. Even if this weren't the case, the music industry is rapidly shifting towards streaming services like Spotify, which make it much harder for new creators to arise, according to NPR's Paula Mejia. Because a more popular song means little more traffic to the streaming service, artists have no incentive to promote their own songs or albums, which creates a tragedy of the commons type scenario and makes it very difficult for unestablished artists to build a community. Kevin, however, has complete control over what he makes and has a direct communication with his fans, which makes his model a much more appealing choice for young musicians who want to see the difference they make in the world. So the model works, and it gives producers a lot of creative freedom. But what has Kevin's model done for the consumers? Well, when Will Williams asked this question to Kevin in an interview, he explained that his main goal is to combat the U.S. copyright system, which he describes as an artificial break on creativity and progress. To explain this, he described how a song written in 1996 would not enter the public domain until decades after its creator died, specifically the year 2152, the year Star Trek Enterprise takes place. You can add a piece of music today that is rights encumbered until well after warp drive is invented, he says. This is especially jarring considering patents last only 20 years, a small fraction of the time it takes for a piece of music to enter the public domain. Since this won't change anytime soon, Kevin's royalty-free music offers a cheap and fearless way of using music for any sort of creative endeavor. 
So, we know that royalty-free music distribution works. We know it's beneficial for producers and consumers alike. But how do we really know if it works? How can younger creators trust that they'll be able to make a living and that they'll be making a difference? Well, just look around you. Kevin's songs can be seen on every type of creative endeavor. Videos, podcasts, video games, theme parks, and everything else, really. Many of these simply could not have been made without Kevin's music, be it because they can't afford to license music or because they don't have the skill to make it for themselves. Sharing your creations and allowing anyone of any skill level to use them for their own projects with nothing more than an acknowledgement goes a long way in a world locked down by copyright laws and it's just spot collect royalties for Macarena. And if one person with a huge passion for music and creativity can make that big of a difference and help that many new creators put themselves out there, where would it be if every new musician followed in his footsteps? Or even a hundred? Or even just one?